I would like to, to start by uh, asking Paul uh, whether uh, he believes that um, the sovereign wealth funds in their investment strategies are having certain characteristics that distinguish them from other uh, real estate players in the market. Okay, well, I suppose I ought to start my answer by saying that most of our experience with sovereign wealth funds is with those organizations that come out of more mature Western-style democracies, so that's North America, Europe, and one or two other jurisdictions around the world. And even that group is not particularly homogenous, but what um, I think does mark them out is they've often got relatively small teams with a global mandate. They're not about wealth preservation. They actually are seeking identifiable investment returns and they go about their due diligence in a way that most investment fund managers would recognize and they're very thorough and professional in what they do. And certainly what most of them are looking for is that they're going to concentrate a lot on, on the major prime global markets, but they will also, depending on their geography, be prepared to invest in emerging markets. In terms of um, where they invest and who they invest with, they do like partnerships quite often, and they're looking for stability, not only in the economy that they're investing in, but also in the corporate structure of their partners. They like a long-term outlook, and they like their partners to have a long-term outlook. They do sell from time to time, but most of them have got such significant volumes of cash coming in that they are much more likely to be places of, of capital than looking to extract profits, at least in the short to medium term. And it's also important with these organizations that when they're dealing with other parties, that their standards of governance and transparency are of a, a very high standard and, and equal to their own. And most of these organizations do have a, a very high level of transparency. And importantly, they also like to see with, the, with their partners and the people they're dealing with experience in their chosen sector and um, a strong track record and a, a team that's got a track record of delivering. In the recent transactions over the last couple of years, um, you had uh, sovereign wealth funds being uh, on the buy and also on the sell side. Uh, would you be able to comment whether they seem primarily to have been on the buying side and how does this tie in with their rather possibly longer investment horizons and try to compare this to, to other real estate players? Sure. Um, the vast, vast majority of the transactions we, we, uh, we track are on the buy side. It's, um, we do see um, some, some sales, so it's, uh, but that tends to be the exception rather than the rule. Um, and so the vast majority of those, I think, the 17 billion euros worth of deals over the last three or four years, 99% of them, or maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but certainly a very, very high percentage are on the buy side. And as I said, those tend to be, I guess, unsurprisingly large, chunky assets in, in very uh, good locations, uh, tend to be very, very good tenants, generating fantastic income streams. And I guess that very much ties into the long-term investment horizon these types of organizations have, which are going to be 10, 20 years or, or more, uh, potentially, so that they can aff afford to take a very long view about uh, their investments and take a long view about how that investment might look in five or ten years' time, given you know, changes in, in the world. Fadi, would you happen to have a, a kind of magic formula of how one uh, approaches uh, sovereign wealth funds? What is the best way to, to approach them and what is the best way to, to introduce them to, to this world of... Uh, uh, greater transparency, uh, the benefits of sharing information, uh, etc. Yeah, I would say, you know, like uh, in any any process, uh, I would say the, the sovereign wealth fund, initially, uh, when they were born in the 70s, the generation fund, uh, you know, they applied a very simple mandate and transparency issues were not an issue in the 70s and 80s. Now it's becoming more of an issue and as a response to that, they gathered as an association and they said, okay, let's go sit down and talk 
and let's see how we're going to be more transparent. Uh, at least it's a start. And uh, out of this discussion came out some principles that are called Santiago principle that are really uh, militate towards more transparency. Now, transparency uh, is relative. If you take funds like uh, the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund with whom uh, Paul Clark's company has done a big deal recently, I mean, transparency is a, is, is a concept in Western Europe and the same word means something different in the Middle East or in Asia or in other parts of the world. So I would say everything is relative. There is a move towards more transparency. Uh, there is um, a realization by sovereign wealth fund in the Middle East that they just cannot continue to uh, not be accountable for what they do. And uh, as such, if you know people who have followed Adia would have seen the changes in their website. Before the website of Adia was two pages, and as of four or five months ago, it's now maybe ten pages. <laughs> so uh, there is clearly uh, there is clearly a move towards uh, towards more transparency. But let's not forget at the end of the day that you know it's as if you are asking. Uh, uh, you know, a foreign minister to tell you his, uh, to disclose his strategy uh, on, uh, on uh, things that they, they consider to be a secret. I mean, Sovereign Wealth Fund is very much ministry of finances in those countries in a way. You know, you cannot ask a minister to, to be like, uh, uh, like uh, to, to have audited accounts and to tell you what they want to do and to and to disclose each and every penny. Uh, it, it doesn't work this way. So, you know, according to cultures, according to country, the transparency notion has different meanings uh, across, across the world, I would say. And um, we are moving towards the right direction, I would say, but it's a long way towards full transparency. Yes, uh, absolutely. And um, given the fact that there are cultural differences and uh, different notions, of the same concept, one has to look at it more in terms of a process, as you rightly say, uh, rather than uh, something which will happen, I don't know, tomorrow or uh, at the end of the year.